it, it changed the course of history when you look at these chaps landing, you know, when you think 175,000, roughly, I think, on the first wave. It could have been disastrous, absolutely disastrous. Hi, I'm Claire, and I recently went on a road trip along the Wild Atlantic Way, where I ended up at this lighthouse, learning about the pivotal role an Irish woman had, without realising, in World War II. First and foremost, on my way to Mayo, I decided to stop in Alone to meet an old friend at Ireland's oldest pub. I am on my way to Sean's bar to meet Dermot, Ireland's oldest pub. And Ireland will just be You might know my friend Dermot from the Tri Channel, so you may or may not be surprised to know that he is actually not a big fan of cameras. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Jesus, can we not just have a nice time together and not have you fucking vlogging your bullshit? I enjoyed a nice Guinness Zero and a catch up with my friend before continuing on my journey to County Mayo and Black Sod Lighthouse, right down the bottom of the Belmullet Peninsula in the Gaeltacht. <laughs> It was a weather station, so a meteorological station, a post office, as well as providing a navigational light, so a lighthouse. We are an active search and rescue base refueling station, and that runs to the Mid-Atlantic. Our big story here, though, is the meteorological station. It was part of the treaty agreements that meteorological services, as well as navigational services, those were provided, as well as weather reporting. And that came to a head during World War II. Obviously, we're a neutral nation, mm -hmm. but we're still providing meteorological reports ac across to the war rooms in London. Unaware from this particular site here in Black Side was Maureen Sweeney, who arrived here, not knowing that there was a weather station here at all. My name is Vincent Sweeney, the lighthouse keeper here in Black Sod Point Lighthouse. And there is uh, a picture of my father and mother that's from 1946, their wedding day. Maureen's 21st birthday, she was here taking reports, like reading the barometer here that's on the, on the table, and like that notating in terms of those barometer readings, and was sending them through to Dublin and were onward laid to London. On the 3rd of June, the barometer was dropping. The invasion was planned, codenamed Operation Overlord, for the 5th of June. And these are the reports then. So you can see her initials here, Maureen Flavin, MF, a good Kerry woman. And these are the barometer readings. That's from the 3rd of June. Because of the forecast that was issued from Black Sod on the 3rd of June, it was postponed by one day. Once those are relayed, she's been asked to make sure that those are correct. She calls Ted. This is their wedding photograph. They were later married. Ted was woken from the bed because he was the lighthouse keeper. So his work and duty is at night. So he's woken from the bed. For the next 24 hours, both of them are non-stop reporting, sending out reports every half hour. And those reports are being sent directly to London, into the war rooms. And we know that because papers have been released only in the last two years. Eisenhower is there stating, I hope this little lighthouse is right. Did she realise the time on board the boss? No, they didn't realise. They didn't know until 1956 when the weather station in Black Sod was being closed and it was being moved into Balmullet. One of the top people from Met Airden came down. Just by chance he says, do you realise that forecast you gave around D-Day, how important it was? It was all classified, of course, then. No, they didn't know, and that was the first taste that they got of it. The weather reports were so hugely important because they were crossing the channel trying to get onto the Normandy beaches, but their personnel carriers are flat bottomed, there's no keel. So if you have any swell or any high seas, those are going to flip and you're going to lose countless lives. And this was the offence, the last offence that the Allies had. And it was a big push back in order to get 150,000 onto the beaches at Normandy. That was the moment that changed history. And Maureen's report here from Black Sod Lighthouse informed that. So the change of date that was meant to be lucky number five, Eisenhower loved five, it was his lucky number, but he had to change it to the 6th of June based on Maureen's weather reports. And Maureen celebrated her 100th birthday 
only two weeks ago. No. Yes, she's a resident here in Balmolish. <laughs> so she'll tell you the story herself. She's a wonderful woman and we were so glad to be able to celebrate that with her and the family. She has been recognised by the Americans, the French and the British Legion. Now this has only happened in the last year or two because she's the only one living. But they all played the part. Ted, my father, Francis, my aunt and my grandmother. Sweeney's association here with Black Salt Lighthouse is still in incredibly strong. Vincent, the attendant here at the lighthouse. Fergus, their, her grandson, is here one of our guides at the lighthouse, so he can give you the tour himself. It's wonderful that that Sweeney connection to the lighthouse is still so strong. Because my mother had come from Kerry in 1943. She answered an ad in the newspaper no as a post office clerk. My grandmother had the post office here in Blacksod. She answered the ad, not realising that weather observations were not part of the post office work, but part of the, the, work, the here. work here, you know. That's a really good story. <laughs> a brilliant one, yeah. Certainly. A big piece of history now. After learning about Maureen and meeting her son, I then took a quick tour of the rest of the lighthouse. When you're coming up here, just mind your head on the, on the corner. Do I actually need to watch my head? No. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Lantern Room. It's mid-19th century technology combined with 21st century technology. So that's our bulb today. So in stark contrast to what we have downstairs, that little yellow dot up there is our present bulb producing 1.4 million candle power. That's our unique flash sequence there. Two flashes white, seven and a half seconds gap, and then two flashes white again. And that's every lighthouse has their own unique sequence and they call that the character of the light. And that's just in case GPS systems fail on board a ship, then the charts come out, the reliable charts, and on the edge of those charts, every lighthouse, their sequence is indicated on those charts. Thank you so much to Mayo North Tourism for all their help this summer organizing various different things that I went to in Mayo. I really enjoyed spending so much time in my home county. Thank you so much to my patrons who fund these road trips. I would not be able to create this content without that help from my Patreon. So if you're in a position to do so, please consider becoming a patron and getting exclusive content, merch discounts, free digital downloads and more. And if you're not in a position to do that, just liking and sharing the videos really, really, really helps me out. If you like this video, you might like either of these videos from the same road trip. And if not, Shanice and Sherlock, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Slon, slon.